Hey everybody, Diddy Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for the first episode of Psychopath's Mandatory Happiness. This is a visual novel, but it's not an to me game like the games I usually play on my channel. Just for your information to start off first thing. <laughs> but if you're a fan of the anime, then you'll probably like this game, hopefully. I love the anime, although I watched it so long ago I really don't remember it, so feel free to summarize things in the description if you like, but make sure you let people know there's going to be spoilers in case other people are reading the comments. And also, I can't find a walkthrough for this game. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because it's too new, because I think it was released on the 13th this month, September 13th. I did find one that's for the Japanese version, though I'm not sure if they made any changes to the English version gameplay-wise. So hopefully this walkthrough will work out, if nothing else. But if anybody knows of a good walkthrough that's for the English version specifically, please let me know, because like I said, I searched but I couldn't find one. So any help would be greatly appreciated. But anyway, let's get started with the first episode here. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Sodom Marine City National Hospital Far above the man-made dome of the once-renowned Metro Paradise stood an ivory tower, and within this tower lied part of the city's core functions, and deep within it. He infiltrated the tower's core with ease. Could it have been any easier? The network's firewall is paper thin. The security system door is easier than a child's room. He whispered to himself. He had avoided social interactions for so long that now he only spoke to himself. It should be somewhere in this tower. My new toy. Where are they hidden it? He searched. and searched for his toy, which had to be somewhere. Found it. About time. Naked, he needs some clothes. And there it was, his toy, in the neurosurgery room, as written on the hospital map. It was his first time touching it, but with only a glance he knew. This doll was made for me. It would be wasted to lock it away in such a place. Come along with me. Was it really made for you or did you just decide that? From now on, you shall move as my body. Let us depart. I have a mission to fulfill. A very important one for Mother. To bring happiness to everyone. That is my mission. That sounds like a pretty good mission. That couldn't possibly go wrong, could it? That couldn't possibly be an ominous statement at all. Isn't that right, Mother? And I shall play Nadeshiko Kugatachi. As I am a woman, I'd prefer to identify with her. Metropolitan Public Welfare Hospital. Nadeshiko Kugatachi, congratulations on your release. It must have been most unfortunate for you to suffer an accident in the middle of your training. No matter how much you prepare and plan, accidents always have a probability of occurring. My coincidence, it happened to me. That's all there is to it. Uh, okay? In any case, I'm glad to be free to leave now. I've been a burden to you during my recovery. No, we were just performing our duty as doctors. More importantly, we're very concerned about the fact that we cannot retrieve your memories. Oh, great, another amnesia case. Right, I had no memories. To be more precise, all my memories from childhood were now all gone. I could remember basic knowledge and life skills. I knew I had studied healthcare and psychology, and also had the aptitude to work at the Ministry of Welfare, PSB. It appeared that I had been in an accident at the training facility, which led to my memory loss. Although, I could not recall ever getting into an accident. Kugutachi, is anything wrong? No, I was just thinking about something. That's fine, but please return at once if anything happens. So, what are your plans for today? Understood. Today, I was thinking of going to work to greet everyone. After all, I imagine I've been out of the office for too long, due to the accident. Is that so? Well, please don't push yourself too hard. We'll be here if there's anything you need. Please do your best. Thank you very much. After giving my thanks to the doctor, I flagged down a taxi and got in. The doctor seemed to have a very good hue, 
probably because he was fulfilling his duty. Just like that doctor, I would make sure to perform my duties as well. After all, this was the path that Sybil had given me. I guess this is a prequel to the anime. Starting today, I have been assigned to CID Division 1. My name is Nadashiko Kugatachi. I look forward to working with you. Er, I'm Inspector Akane Tsunemori. Inspector Kinoza was originally supposed to show you around, but he got caught up in something. The woman who greeted me looked to be around my age, but she gave off a childish impression, although it was probably a bit rude of me to think of my senior like that. In any case, let's get going. We don't know when the next dispatch request might come. Is it very busy around here? Busy? It's more like we're really short-staffed. On my first day, I had to report to the crime scene. As we walked, Inspector Sunomori told me about her first day on the job. This seemed tougher than I thought it would be. There was no surprise why only a few were suitable. Speaking of which, Miss Kugatachi, I heard you had an accident. Are you feeling fine? I was discharged today. There are no issues. What? So you barely got discharged? It's not good to push yourself too hard. The medical results show no physical or mental problems. There's also the fact that I'm accepting this post late, and I do not like to waste time. I is that so? You're so serious, Miss Kugatachi. Anyway, where shall we head to now? The Criminal Investigation Department office floor? Uh, yes. First off, I'll bring you to the Division 1 office. I think I can get you acquainted with everyone, since they're all in today. We'll get the introductions done as I show you around. Please do. During my hospitalization, I had read a few books on workplace communication. I did not know my colleagues and subordinates, but I was confident that I would do fine. I raised my chin and followed Inspector Sunomori. Oh, Mr. Masaoka, Mr. Kogami. As we walked down the corridor, Inspector Sunomori stopped the two men walking toward us. Both of them gave off a dangerous impression. Oh, it's Missy. Who's the other lady beside you? The newly assigned inspector, Nadeshiko Kugatachi. Oh, I'm Kugatachi. Looking forward to working with you. I see. So this is our new owner. Owner? Forgive me if I'm wrong, but is there some sort of trend in the Public Safety Bureau where men are reared by the women? <laughs> is this girl even more straight-laced than Inspector Ginoza or what? Hey, Missy, have you even told her about us yet? Uh, well, Miss Kugatachi, these two are what we call enforcers. They're our subordinates. Yes, I have been informed about enforcers. Latent criminals who hunted other latent criminals. As such, they knew how latent criminals thought and were adept at catching them. And our job as inspectors was to inspect and monitor them, ensuring that these unique latent criminals did not run wild. I love Kogami, he's so hot. Especially in the anime. He looks much better in the anime than he does in this game. That makes things easy. The name's Shinyo Kogami. Looking forward to working with you, new inspector. Oh, I'm Tomomi Masaoka. Are you heading over to meet Inspector Kinoza now? Yes, that's the plan. Then you should check out the analyst place first. The office is a bit hectic at the moment. Did something happen? If by something you mean Kagari, there was a mistake with the idiot's paperwork, so Gino has been fixing it. That's all. Give it a while to simmer down. <laughs> Kagari can be so careless. Then let's head over to the place of the one you call the analyst. I do not wish to be a nuisance to Inspector Ginoza. I agree. Well then, Mr. Masaoka, Mr. Kogami, we'll be on our way. Yeah, see you later. I was brought to the analysis lab, which was full of multi-panel monitors and high-powered computers. Hi, Akane, how's today going? I'm showing the new inspector around, Miss Kugatachi. This is Miss Shion Karanomori, the analyst. Um, the analyst's job is... My job is to use the machines and my brain to support you during your investigations. For the most part, I determine victims' cause of death, 
and examine the data from the street scanners to analyze and issue psychopath's diagnosis, among other things. I see. It appears I will require your assistance often, then. I look forward to working with you. Pleasure's mine. I'm always happy to have more cute girls around. I think whether my appearance is defined as cute as a matter of personal preference, but I am happy to be thought of as likable nevertheless. Hey, Akane, is this girl okay? Um, how do I put this? It appears that Miss Kugatachi is a really serious person. I see. Oh, I'm sorry. But there's this nagging case I have to deal with from Division 2 right now. Is it okay if we continue getting to know each other later? Oh, no worries. We were actually on our way to the Division 1 office. So, Miss Karanomori, we'll see you again later. Okay, see you later. Well, she's chipper. Finally, we reached the office of CID Division 1, my workplace from here on. There were two men and a woman inside, but which one was Inspector Ginoza? I know, I know. Inspector Ginoza, I bought Miss Kugatachi. There he is. Thank you, Tsunomori. For goodness sake, if only that idiot Kagari hadn't made such careless errors. Sorry. If you really care, then start checking your work from now on, otherwise it's overtime for you. They are so strict, Kuni. Oh, sorry about that. Inspector Kugutachi, right? I'll be working with you in Division 1. My name is Nobuchiko Ginoza. Nice to meet you. I look forward to working with you and contributing to society as a fellow inspector. Ah, I have a feeling an even greater honor student than Akane has come. Have you checked the functions of your risk home yet? Remember to confirm the operation of the Hue Checker. Hearing that, I look down at my risk calm. The job of an inspector is tough, and only a few are capable of handling the stress. The Hue Checker was the standard device used to maintain our state of mind. It seemed if there was a need, one could receive medical care supplements from the medical affairs department free of charge. I should probably check my Hue regularly. Let's try checking it now. It's currently a clear color, to be expected since I'm an inspector. By the way, are those two over there enforcers? Yeah, that's Yayoi Kunizuka and Shusei Kagari. They're not like you. Don't get friendly with them. Just think of them as tools. Dang, Gina was so hard on us. Wait a minute, Inspector Ginoza, if you put it that way, then... It's a fact, Sunomori. You should remember it well. I'm sorry if I'm in a rush, but I need to submit this to the chief. I'll leave the rest to you. Um, Miss Kukatachi, what Inspector Ginoza meant to say was... I think he pretty much said what he meant to say. I think it's a fair assessment. Well, do as you see fit. I understood it as practicing moderation and our relationships with subordinates. Ah, oh, well, if you're fine with that, then it's okay. I'm not sure why, but you really throw me off. Is that so? In any case, is this everyone in Division 1? Oh no, there's a new guy out buying juice right now. He should be back soon. I'm back. Shoo, you want a cola, right? And here's the tea for Miss Kunizuka. Huh? Who's that woman over there? Nadeshiko Kugatachi. As of today, I have been assigned to the Criminal Investigation Department as an inspector. The moment I saw his face, a heavy throb started pounding inside my head, and wondered why. Oh, a new superior. Name's Takuma Tsurugi. I just got here yesterday. Let's get along well as fellow rookies. As a token of our new friendship, care for some coffee? He held out a can of what looked like a very sweet coffee. So presumptuous of him, but for some reason I took it. To be polite? Thank you very much, Enforcer Tsurugi. It's fine, it's fine. I gotcha. Looking at his huge smile as he flashed his pearly white teeth, I suddenly felt this strange pressure within my chest. I look forward to working with you. He was an enforcer, a subordinate, or rather, something more like a tool. But somewhere deep within, I had this absurd notion that made me think he had something I needed. Please don't tell me it's like love at first sight. Like a footprint on fresh concrete, he left a strong impression on me. The Public Safety Bureau was always booming and bustling, with cases flooding in, detectives running out. As such, 
an incident occurred immediately after I had been assigned. It was located in a city far from Tokyo, so right after getting assigned, I was sent on an external investigation. These type of cases were not something that happened often. Sado Marine City, Nigata Prefecture A floating dome-like city amidst the space formed by the mainland, Sado and Noto Peninsula, once known as Metro Paradise. At first, it was a base of operations for methane hydrate mining and a model city for the future, but that was all in the past. Now the population has been on a steep decline. With the widespread implementation of drones, the northern region became an unmanned granary. Likewise, mining became automated, leading to many people leaving Sado Marine City. The population had already begun declining many years ago. Those in the residential area left first, and as they left, the abandoned district grew. The city reminded me of a dusty old toy chest, surrounded by the sea. And although it was my first time here, I felt... Nostalgic? It made me feel the strange sense of longing, homesickness. This where I'm from? Did I live here for a while? I understand it must be quite hard on you, as your first mission is quite a distance away, but let's still do our best. Affirmative. There won't be a problem. Seeing as she was worried, I pumped my fist in the air, but for some reason, Inspector Sunomori and the rest of Division 1 just stared at me. Because that's totally against your character? <laughs> Is she dumb? That's rude. That's a rude thing to say to an inspector, Kagari. A rude thing to say to anyone! I- I like your enthusiasm. Well then, let's go! It had all started with a report filed by the parents of a young girl. They claimed their daughter had been abducted. An abduction happened within Tokyo, and we, Division 1, will be conducting the investigation. An abduction. Tension coursed throughout the office. It was my first case. Naturally, my back straightened. Well, that doesn't sound too good. What's the details? Here's the data. Hey, what a cute girl. The missing person is Shiori Matsukata, a high schooler from Tokyo, huh? Displayed beside the abductee's portrait was a profile of her, a 16-year-old female, first-year student at Sakurazaka Senior High School. Yes, it appears her parents filed a report stating she had not returned home since yesterday night. But Miss Sunomori, isn't it hasty to assume she's been abducted? She's at an emotional age. She could have just not wanted to go home and stepped out for a bit. Shiori Matsukata has a clear hue. She would never have done such a thing. Also, there is something suspicious. Suspicious? Take a look at this. The image on the monitor changed to one taken by a street camera. Other than the abductee, Shiori Matsukata, another person, a male of similar age, was present. The youth's face was not visible, but Shiori was smiling, as if she had a close relationship with him. The two were last seen getting into an automated taxi. They look close, but who's that kid? His identity has not yet been confirmed. Kara Nomori is currently analyzing the street scanners and camera logs, trying to pinpoint their location. Hey, wait. So you're saying this kid is the kidnapper? Don't they just look like they're two good friends? It appears that way to me as well. But look at the youth's hand movements. Doesn't it bother you a bit? Hand movements. We played back the footage and zoomed in on his hand. He awkwardly reached out for Shiori and kept wiping his hands as if they were sweaty clammy. He was nervous. The youth's nervousness is too abnormal to judge them as being good friends. I think there's something more to it. Suddenly, a call came in. Okay, the two of them have been recorded on camera somewhere else. Something's not looking too good. The monitor switched screens and showed Shiori and the young man in a different location. Thanks for coming today. I was surprised that you came all of a sudden, but I had a good time. Huh? What? Wait, aren't you still having a good time? I have to go. I have a curfew. Huh? What do you mean curfew? Don't you live by yourself in Tokyo? My AI secretary keeps a log. My curfew is 7pm. 
Any later, my family will be notified. Pretty soon, my mom will call me. Are they that stupid? Do they really have such little faith in their daughter? If so, they should have never let you move to Tokyo in the first place. Hey, I'm in Tokyo for school. My parents were only thinking about my future. What about me? Are you just going to leave me behind? Come with me. Let's go back to the same high school again. Suddenly, it seemed like Shiori's cell phone started ringing. It's my mom. Sorry, but I really have to go. Hey, wh what are you doing? The male suspect grabbed her cell and shoved his own in her face. The moment she saw it, Shiori's face froze. The hollow image projected from his phone was of Shiori in her middle school uniform. She was asleep, hunched over on her desk, and her skirt was all wrinkled. Well, that's creepy. For some reason, the moment I saw that uniform, a faint pain surged within my head. Even though I had no memories of my school days, I felt slightly nostalgic. Well, that could be a clue. Maybe I went there? When did you take this, Hollow? Isn't it cute? That's you back when you were in the same class. I snapped it in 3D HD, so it's crystal clear, no matter what angle you view it from. I'll send this to all your friends from your cell. Stop it! Delete it! No! What's the big deal? Didn't seem like anything incriminating or embarrassing. I mean, it'd be weird to have everybody sent that picture, but still. She already desperately lunged for the phone. The male suspect ran away, taunting her. Then... They both vanished from the street camera's view. That was all the evidence we could retrieve. So, it's blackmail. This is certainly an abduction case. Taking advantage of the other party's weakness and gaining control with threats. What a shameless act. But since he had done that, his hue must have been clouded prior to this. No. uh Wait a moment, Miss Kugatachi, couldn't it be just a minor misunderstanding between friends? What's your proof? Why are you defending him? Is it because you know him? No way. But, well, he may be a junior of mine. What do you mean, maybe? Junior, what do you mean? The uniform Shiori Matsukata was wearing in that hollow is from my alma mater, Sado Marine City. It's from a public middle school from there. Sado Marine City. Feeling these words on my tongue, Sado Marine City, my head started to hurt again. Why was this happening? It was annoying and interfering with my thoughts. Hmm. Hey, doll. Are you not feeling too well? Don't call me doll. No, I'm fine. So, there's a high probability that the young male and Shiori Matsukata were classmates at a public middle school in Sado Marine City. If that's true, the use identity could be easily ascertained. Were either of them seen after this footage was taken? Unfortunately, untraceable. The kid, too. If they avoid the cameras and scanners, there's nothing for me to analyze. At the very least, it seems the kid is aware he's doing something bad. Their location was unknown. However, they had left a huge clue. Have you checked all the records of street cameras and scanners outside of Tokyo? Especially within the Hokuriki region as well as the PSB data systems. That also didn't go too well. In the first place, the technological infrastructure of that city is lacking. And second place? Is there any more to that? I guess not. Hokuriki, I see. So that's what it's about. You have your pretty good intuition, Kugatachi. It's not intuition. It's an analysis of their words and actions. What do you mean? He said, let's go back. In which case, would Sado Marine City not be their most likely destination? I couldn't understand why he had done such a thing. But even though I did not know why, I knew how to track his movements. So we just had to follow that trail. Emergency report from Hokuriki. Poor Hue levels detected at an underwater subway station in Sado Marine City. It seems the youth ignored the warning and fled. A thorough investigation and analysis was conducted at once. All street scanners among underwater subway stations were analyzed, and footage from cameras were reviewed. Shiori Matsukata's terrified face popped up on a pixelated 2D image. As the male suspect forced Shiori onto the train, his face could now be clearly seen. It was easy to identify him now, Haruto Sato, age 16. 
born in Sado Marine City, where he currently attended a local high school. Haruto's hue was a dark orange color, indicating impulsive criminal tendencies. We did not know if he was a latent criminal already, but immediate therapy was a must. Okay, and there we're ending this video. Ugh, okay, being the first one, it's really difficult. <laughs> Establishing the voices and getting used to it and all. Especially rough at the very beginning, so I'm really sorry if the recording's not exactly up to snuff. But hopefully the next video will turn out better and more smooth. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye-bye, everybody.